I was going to open with the line that was born at a very early age. Somebody over here. <laughs> Dark and stormy night doesn't really apply. Bright and stormy day, I like. So it was a bright and stormy day. Um, Fargo, North Dakota, 1951, I was born. At a pretty young age. Um, lived on a farm about 60 miles northwest of Fargo. Uh, my whole family was musical. Mom and dad both sang in church choirs and whatever. My dad played several different instruments, although I never saw him do that because he was always working so hard, keeping the farm running. One of my brothers had a full career as a high school and middle school band director, all uh, in the state of North Dakota. My three sisters all sing and play the piano. They all have played accompaniment for high school students in vocal contests. It's one of the toughest things you can do being good enough to play the piano, but you have to follow somebody over here to sing it. Um, I had a brother who sang with the Fargo chapter for about three years in the very late 60s. Moved to the Chicago area in, uh, well, after that, sang with the DuPage County chapter. Moved to Dallas and sang with the vocal majority in the town north chapters. And uh, moved to Dallas sang with the vocal majority for a year or two, and then sang with the, uh, the Northtown Chorus in Dallas. Uh, moved to Arizona, sang with the Phoenicians. Finished up his barbershop career with the Paradise Valley chapter. Uh, he was in a comedy quartet, had lots of fun that way. Uh, on to me, I had piano lessons from about second grade on, well, for a few years, learned how to read music. My parents bought me a cornet. You were talking about a cornet, weren't you, Dad? Yeah. In the fifth grade. Yeah. Played that through high school. Um, attended college at Concordia Moorhead and I graduated with a degree in psychology and a minor in music. And I was always involved, also involved with the uh, Christian outreach teams at Concordia. Um, after moving to the Twin Cities, my wife at the time worked at a bank in St. Anthony Park, and uh, she became friends with another teller named Lois Glazer. Ron Glazer. Ron, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lois was married to Ron Glazer, who was a St. Paul chapter member. Ron and Lois invited us to a show, a St. Paul show. And I was hesitant, I didn't really know what barbershop was about didn't know what to expect, but I finally agreed to go. And after the, after the uh, first chorus song, I turned to my wife and I said, I gotta do this. <laughs> Not hear it, I gotta do it. So I joined the chapter. I filled out the program card, Max Parks called me and I went to my first meeting. Um, joined the chapter as a lead. Um, I became an assistant director after a couple of years, Bob Dama was the, was the frontline director. And uh, in 1984, I was selected as the barbershopper of the year. Also in 84, my first quartet formed, Northern Comfort, Mike Ferris, Jeff Greasy, and uh, Rick Anderson. And I sang lead. In 85, we were the mic testers for all three preliminary rounds of the, of the uh, Minneapolis International, all three quartet rounds we sang for. Well, that was fun. Um, in the fall of 85, we finished the district contest in second place. Harmony Works beat us by two points. And we qualified for Salt Lake City International in 86, where we placed 23rd. And I believe we were, if my memory serves, we were six points out of 20th place. So that was, that was also fun. One of our songs was the Three Girl Medley. First there was Manji, I'm always thinking of you, Manji. Um, oh, um, the arrangement category at that time didn't have 100 points to play with, they only had plus or minus points, we just had a zero. That three girl medley got the top arrangement score in the whole contest. Mm -hmm. 28 plus points wow. on that. And we won the district contest in Rochester in 86. Northern Comfort sang for a fairly large party once. One of our songs was the, was the Three Girl Medley. Third name in the medley was Rosie. And as we got to that part of the song, our SP called for a swing to the right. 
and uh, standing squarely where we put our Rosie was Rosie Greer. Oh. <laughs> that was Doug. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, he, uh, he took it well. <laughs> Thankfully. Yeah. Probably better than we did. In 87, we qualified again for the international contest in Hartford. This time we placed 32nd. Uh, Northern Comfort folded later that summer due to creative differences. Late in the fall of, of, of 87, I got a call from Doug Miller, who said he was interested in quartetting with, with me and a couple of other Commodores, uh, Mark Conlon and Lance Johnson. We sang through a few songs and Twin City Alliance was born. Uh, we were together for about seven years, sang on several barbershop shows in and around Minnesota. We never won the district, but we have several second place plaques, don't we? <laughs> One fun story. On uh, two different occasions a year apart, we were hired by a, a, a railroad company owner to sing for his company's thank you party on, a, on an antique train. And uh, da, 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 on it, uh, in, in northern Wisconsin. So they flew us from Minneapolis to Green Bay and then drove north for about an hour, hour drive to the, the starting point. Our first flight, the first time, was on a twin engine plane of Beechcraft, I think, I'm not sure. Um, our flight time from here to Green Bay was two hours. And the second trip was on uh, Carl Polad's Learjet. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, I guess Carl wasn't going anywhere that, that weekend. <laughs> As we taxied to the runway, the pilots asked us if we wanted them to do a power takeoff. We said, okay. <laughs> Lance happened to be sitting in a backwards facing seat. And uh, just, as, just as they hit the throttles, Lance was opening his mouth to say something and his tongue literally fell out of his mouth. <laughs> and my head was in Boo's lap, <laughs> leaning forward. Oh yeah. In Doug's lap, right? Yeah, Doug's lap. <laughs> that was that was fun. And that takeoff, that plane all, went almost straight up in the air. That was just amazing. Flight time, the, the first time in the Beechcraft was was two hours. From on the ground in Minneapolis to on the ground in in uh, Green Bay, forty minutes, <laughs> three hundred miles. Uh, after Twin City Alliance, I wanted to try singing baritone, and front page was formed. Mark Conlon, Steve Case, and Rick Anderson. Rick, Rick was singing lead. Um, we didn't last all that long due to creative differences. We were only together about four, what part were you singing? four months or so. I was singing baritone. Yeah. That was my first shot at baritone. All the time baritone? Mm -hmm. now, shortly after this time, uh, Downstate Express was shy of baritone and asked me if I wanted to try out. I, said, I would have said yes if I hadn't already made a commitment to sing with Dwayne Hutton, Big Dwayne, um, Bob Brutzman, Robert Dwayne, and Mark Conlon, not Dwayne. And uh, Northland Gold was formed in the neighborhood of 1994. I didn't check any record, but it was in that area anyway. And we were good enough to earn second place at the district level a couple of times. And then one of our more memorable events centered in that quartet centered around a connection with uh, a family that owned Lull Manufacturing, forklift company. They manufactured those, those machines. We sang for a party at their house in, I think it was Mendota Heights. And they, uh, they liked our presentation <laughs> enough so that when that family moved to South Carolina, they flew us down there. Just to sing for them in their housewarming party. Yeah. That was pretty cool. And it might have been uh, 95 or 96 that I had a personal milestone event. So I was singing with Northland Gold and the, uh, the teaching quartet from the North Star Chorus um, was registered as SPATS, the St. Paul Area Teaching Society. Um, And uh, where, where, where was I? I was singing lead with Spats, and we had competed at the division level and qualified for the district. 
At the district contest that fall, Spass was fortunate enough to place fifth, and Northland Gold placed second. And at least for a few years, and I, I might still be the only one to do this, I might not, but um, at the time anyway, I was, I was the only one to, to ever sing in two different quartets at a district level with uh, two different voice parts and have both quartets in the top five. <laughs> that, was, that was kind of fun. I sang with the uh, GNU chorus for about four years, starting in 98, and I have a fourth place medal with that chorus from the Kansas City 2000 International. Northland Gold folded after six or seven years, and uh, soon after that I found myself singing with Tony Blackwood, Pretty Fair Lead, GNU, David Boyd, who had joined the Society and the St. Paul chapter at the same time I did. And David had been a baritone who wanted to move to bass. And, and the tenor was Jim Olson, who uh, was and still is a pretty darn good tenor. Um, we became Nouveau, and we're fortunate enough to win the district in 2003. And that's already 15 years ago. Jeez. So we sang together for another three years or so, and then uh, disbanded creative differences. <laughs> About 10 years ago, after not quartetting for a couple of years, I got together with part of, as part of a notorious St. Paul chapter quartet. Ron Riley is lead, Grant Warning is tenor, and our bass... Oh yeah, Steve. <laughs> One of our favorite things to do is sing in Valentine's. I've, you've probably heard about the Valentine's Day things that we've had a lot of fun with over the years, singing with the, singing uh, for a small uh, car club that hires us on Valentine's Day evening to sing at the uh, White Castle in St. Paul, University in Lexington. That's always a fun night. The White Castle people put on the dog, tablecloths, mood lighting, wait staff, and reservations. Probably the best part of my barbershop life, aside from the good friends and and the uh, sheer joy of singing a good reading chord was October 2015 when I was inducted into the Land Lakes District Hall of Fame. That recognition is priceless. <clears throat> so I, I retired from chorus directing in 2011, retired from my full-time job and my church choir directing position last summer, and I'm still getting used to being footloose. I'm enjoying singing with Notorious and the St. Paul Chorus, and that's my story. I think I have a, a few years left. I'm not quite finished yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.